Welcome everybody. This is our Holy Hormones Power Workshop. I'm excited to be here tonight and I know a lot of you guys are because I've had several um, women come up and ask me as patients, hey, when are you going to do a, a workshop about hormones? Uh, I'm tired of these hot flashes and night sweats and uh, this whatever. I don't know what menopause is, but I feel like I have it. And then I've had men ask about low T and you know why they don't feel the way they should feel because they see all these commercials on low testosterone. And there's a lot of questions about hormones. There's a lot of supplements out there. And we're going to give you real answers tonight by teaching you how to tap into the power within, power inside of you. And no matter what you're dealing with right now, whether it's the night sweats or anything else I just talked about, um, there's a solution. And the solution is the five essentials. So when we, when we mention holy hormones, what usually pops up is hot flashes, uh, night sweats, mood swings, um, you know, PMS, those types of issues, weight gain. People find that women find a lot of times when you get to that, you know, 40 plus age, it's, it's hard to lose weight, especially around the midsection. A lot of that has to do with cortisol and your hormones. So we're going to give you answers tonight, but I want you to start thinking about if you have any of these issues, just don't blame it on getting older. Don't blame it on menopause. Menopause is not a disease condition. There's a lot of other countries in the world where menopause is it's celebrated that you're no longer having your monthly cycle. It's just change of life. It's not this crisis and disease that we've made it in the United States. We've made everything right now a disease in the U.S. So whatever it is that you're dealing with in our country, pregnancy is now a disease. You know, you used to get pregnant and have the baby at home, and, and now, now there's a diagnosis for, for pregnancy. There's a diagnosis for everything, and I want you to understand it's not a disease process. And if you're having any of these symptoms that are over the top and really interfering with your life, there's a reason for it, and that reason is some type of interference. And really, that's what we're going to be looking for today. And the solution, as always, is in the five essentials. So I want you to see how the five essentials relate to your hormones. When I was doing this research on this specific workshop, I really just started diving into, because I had so many people ask me, hey, what's going on with this? I started looking at all the research on what helps and, and what helps balance your body. And it was, it was amazing, but I should have known that it, what came up was the five essentials. They talked about maximizing your mind that they talked about make sure your your stress isn't too high nerve supply there's so much research on how nerve supply and how your spine actually uh, directs all of the flow of the hormones nutrition as always is huge um, there's if you're inflamed um, we're going to walk through that tonight and show you what to do nutritionally and why you're having hormone imbalances because of your nutrition we'll talk about um, maximize oxygen and lean muscle there's there's ways that you can exercise that decrease cortisol levels and increase testosterone levels and then minimizing toxins. Specifically, there's things called xenoestrogens we're going to get into tonight that interfere with the normal hormone function in your body. So when we walk through this, we're going to give you real answers tonight, but I want you to start asking the question again, why am I having these problems? So what area of interference do I need to work with? Do I need to work on all five of these essentials? Do I need to work on two of them? But we're going to give you the tools that you're going to need as you move forward here. So First thing I want you to understand about hormones is it's really a symphony. And I put this up there because there's going to be a quiz in a few minutes. So make sure I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to memorize this and we're going to go around and do a quiz. Um, not really. What I want you to do is just look at it and understand that it's a complex thing when you look at hormones. And this is the way your body works all the time. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Your body it has an incredible innate inborn wisdom that runs this without you ever thinking of it. That's, that's what we teach all the time in here is that the best doctor in the world is already inside you. You're a healing machine. Well, if you look at this, this hormone axis here, you'll see that there's the hypothalamus and the pituitary and then the adrenal cortex and, and the, the arrows go back and forth. So they talk to each other and this is what balances your hormones. And I want you to think of it as like a, a symphony. When, you're, when the conductor's up there at a symphony with you know 80 plus instruments and singers and everything else, then you're ma he's making sure that everything is done in the right pitch at the right time with the right tempo. Um, and if anything is off, it, you're gonna hear it. Well, it's the same thing here. If we can get that power inside you, the, the doctor inside you on the job working the way it's supposed to, it's gonna fix this. There's no doctor on the planet, there's no drug on the planet that's gonna fix the issue with the symphony is we gotta get the conductor working and that's that power inside of you. So that's what we're going to focus on um, the rest of tonight. I, I do want you to understand what the players are when, when we talk about these hormones. There's four that I want to get into tonight. Um, the first one is estrogen. Uh, estrogen is the most important, or I guess the most powerful female hormone. Um, it's in the first half of the, over, or the uh, menstrual cycle. It's responsible for 
um, building up the wall of the uterus, um, getting ready for pregnancy. It does a lot of things though. It builds bone. Um, it, it does a lot with your body. Okay. And it's, it's very powerful and it's very necessary. And then there's another one called progesterone, which is the third one down there. Progesterone actually is designed to offset the effects of estrogen. So there needs to be a balance between estrogen and progesterone. That's the way, again, your body was designed. And that intelligence inside of your body knows how to, how to um, if there's too much estrogen, then the progesterone can step in and, and kind of mitigate the effects of estrogen. So progesterone and estrogen are very important to be in balance. And then there's another one called, uh, obviously, testosterone you've heard of. This is not just for men. It's important for women and muscle building and metabolism. But it's very important for men uh, in terms of libido, sex drive, uh, also mood. Um, if there's declining levels of testosterone um, for various reasons, it can cause depression. Um, just, you know, I've had guys just explain that they're in a funk. They feel like they're in a funk. They don't, they don't feel like they used to. And that has a lot to do with testosterone. And then there's the last one here called cortisol. And cortisol is, is everybody's enemy really in this room um, if there's elevated levels of cortisol for a long time. Cortisol is a stress hormone, it's an adrenal hormone that's there when you're stressed out. And it's there because if you're running from a bear in the woods, it's important that you have cortisol. Again, it's, it's there for a reason. But um, unfortunately, we live our lives in this constant flood of cortisol because we're always in fight or flight. We're always stressed out. So cortisol levels go up, and you'll see in a little while how cortisol um, wrecks the rest of these um, when it comes especially to what we call estrogen dominance, okay? So I want to talk about something called estrogen dominance because right now that's really the problem uh, when it comes to most women dealing with the, the hot flashes and the, the sleep issues and the night sweats. Um, it if you have a lot of estrogen, it decreases your testosterone if you're a man. So that's going to be a huge problem as well. And so when we say estrogen dominance, here's what I mean. Throughout life, especially if you're a woman around the, the menopause age, or actually any time, if you have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone, um, you're going to have these symptoms. Okay, so it means there's too much estrogen, not enough progesterone to offset it. Um, irritability, anxiety, hot flashes, insomnia, weight gain, migraines, depression. Those are all documented uh, symptoms that happen from this estrogen dominance, from this this, the hormones being out of balance. Now, the problem with this is what um, most doctors understand is that as you get older and you go towards this perimenopausal age and you, and you enter menopause, your estrogen really decreases. Okay, your estrogen decreases, but they're not thinking a lot about progesterone right now. Estrogen decreases, so then um, they give you estrogen in the form of hormone replacement therapy, which causes the estrogen dominance to get worse because it's not offset by the progesterone. Hopefully that makes sense. So there's too much estrogen um, when they give you this hormone replacement and, and they don't, there's not enough progesterone. So most women, there's way too much estrogen, not enough progesterone. Even if you're not doing hormone replacement therapy, you get a lot of what we call xenoestrogens from different places uh, in the environment. And that's something that we really wanna make sure that you're understanding is that you have to get rid of those um, because you're getting estrogen from, from plastics and, and pesticides and there's, there's too many sources of estrogen. So the problem if you're dealing with hot flashes, you know, having a hard time sleeping, night sweats, usually it's too much estrogen, not enough progesterone um, because of this estrogen dominance. Now, when we give hormone replacement therapy, here's the issue. Um, that's Premarin, you know, Estrace, any of those other medications and drugs that they were really popular in the early 2000s, late 90s. Uh, and not as popular now, but still a lot of women are taking these synthetic hormones. Well, here's a couple quotes on, on hormone replacement therapy and why it's a really bad idea to just supplement with synthetic estrogen, number one. It's, it's bad for you. Um, so this is John Abramson. He's, he's a medical doctor from Harvard. He said, hormone replacement therapy not only doesn't decrease the risk of heart disease, strokes, or Alzheimer's disease, it increases these risks. So it actually increases the risk of heart, heart disease, strokes, or Alzheimer's disease. Um, and they actually found this out or in, in 2003, they found out in this, what's called the Women's Health Initiative that hormone replacement therapy wasn't this magic bullet. It was actually causing a lot of damage. So they halted this study on women and hormone replacement because of all the damage it was causing. This is according to the Journal of American Medical Association in 2000 says a woman's risk of breast cancer increases by 8% with each year of hormone replacement therapy. So if you know someone taking this hormone replacement therapy, you got to tell them, you got to educate them on this. You got to spread the word, tell them what you know. And um, there's a lot of women around you that have been doing this and it increases your risk of breast cancer. 
Um, specifically, breast cancer is a lot of those are estrogen uh, driven by estrogen. And if you're taking estrogen, then no wonder you're getting so much uh, breast cancer. There's this next one. It's talking about Premarin specifically. And Premarin, if you look at the name, stands for pregnant mare's urine, Premarin. And this is how they collect the, the, the urine from the pregnant horse right here. And they're, you know, taking that, filtering and basically injecting that into your body. That's insane to me that we think that's the solution. Um, but this is from 2003. They looked at... Um, what happened when women were taking Premarin? And in 2003, we stopped uh, prescribing Premarin to a lot of women, and now it's actually back on the market. They're, they're prescribing it again, which is crazy. But in 2003, a year after uh, millions of women stopped taking that hormone, breast cancer rates dropped 7%, which is the first time they've gone down. Um, and it happened just because we stopped taking hormone replacement therapy. So hormone replacement therapy is, again, is that outside-in model. Health does not come from outside of you. It comes from inside of you. If we can get something inside of you working right, then we're going to be in good shape. When you try to go outside in, you're always going to have uh, these damaging effects. So that's not the answer. So what is? Well, there's three causes that I'm going to walk you through tonight of hormone imbalance. First one is the standard American diet. That's important. Equally important is xenoestrogens and equally important is stress. So your diet these synthetic or estrogens or mimicking estrogens and then stress. All those things are going to cause your hormones to be thrown off balance. So let's get to uh, the standard American diet. This is essential number three, maximize nutrients. The standard American diet causes too much insulin from sugar. Okay, so we eat way too much sugar and way too many grains in the United States. So what I always say is if you want to make an animal fat, what do you feed it? Grain. And if you want to make a human fat, what do you feed it? Grain. So our job is to um, decrease the amount of sugar in the body because of what it does because of insulin. When you have too much insulin, it wreaks havoc on your hormone balance. Too much insulin wreaks havoc on all of the hormones that we just talked about. So what most people are doing is the uh, standard American diet over here. And what I've done is flip the food pyramid upside down because the only way it can be remotely healthy is by turning it upside down. It's completely backwards because if you look at the base of the food pyramid, what do you see? Um, you know, six to 10 servings of bread, which turns immediately to sugar, which messes up your fatty or not only your fatty acid ratios, but also your insulin levels and blood sugar levels. That's why so many people have diabetes and prediabetes. Um, and then, you know, there's some veggies in there. And then if you see at the bottom down here of, of mine, they say you, you should eat um, sparingly fats, you know, so you really don't want to do very much fat, which is wrong. As we know, you want to do actually a lot more fat. You should do more fat than you do grains. So flip it upside down and you might be in pretty good shape. But the key is going to be um, getting rid of the things that turn to sugar. We eat far too much sugar in our country. So for the men, this is really important when it comes to testosterone. Research uh, presented at the Endocrine Society's 91st annual meeting in Washington found that sugar ingestion can cause a man's testosterone to drop by up to 25%. I'm going to read that again. Sugar ingestion it causes a man's testosterone to drop up to 25%. And a lot of people, when I talk about this, they say, oh, I don't eat sugar. Well, where is the sugar? It's in your packaged food. It's in uh, ketchup. It's in the, the, the Coke that you drink or the iced tea uh, that you got at the restaurant. That's where the sugar usually comes from. So we have to decrease the sugar and lick that sugar habit. So if you, if you have your Maximize Living Nutrition Plans book, it talks a lot about getting rid of the things that turn to sugar so that insulin level doesn't go out of control. Now, the other really big thing other than sugar is fats. And, uh, and this is important if you're dealing with things like um, PMS, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, endometriosis, uh, uterine cysts, anything like that. It, this is a very important topic because we're going to talk about omega-6 versus omega-3 fats. Normal fatty acid ratios of omega-6 to omega-3 is 2 to 1. Okay, And omega-6 fats are, to simplify things, what we call inflammatory fats and omega-3 are the anti-inflammatory fats. When you have too many omega-6s and not enough omega-3s, that's where your body is in an inflammation mode. Ideally, it should be no more than two to one omega-6 to omega-3. Most Americans are 25 to one, if not 30 or 40 to one pro-inflammatory, which means they're in this inflammatory state, so they have these things called prostaglandins. Prostaglandins in your body, that's what causes PMS, cramping, mood swings, and all that. So if you know someone that has, is having a really hard time, like I, I was had a patient recently, she's um, 17 years old and just has horrible times with, with her period. During four or five days, she'll just be knocked out. 
horrible cramps, can't get out of bed, and her fatty acid ratios are a mess. So the first thing we start working on is let's normalize those fatty acid ratios. We got her spine checked, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, and then get her fatty acid ratios back where they need to be to restore that balance to her body so it can heal. So um, what we recommend is the, the best supplement on the, on the planet for this is the Optimal Omega. Raise your hand if you're taking this right now. Raise your hand. Um, there's a really good test to find out if, if you should be taking the optical, Optimal Omega. You can do It's really simple. You take these uh, two fingers on your left hand, these first two fingers, and you put it right under your neck. So everybody do that right here under your neck. Do you feel a pulse? Yes. If you feel a pulse, that's a positive test that you need to be taking this. Everyone on planet Earth should be taking this supplement because our fatty acid ratios are a mess because of our diets, too many grains. So the fatty acid ratio actually balances that. It's in a two to one ratio, exactly the way your body needs it to be. And it will restore the ratios of the, of the omega-6 to the omega-3. So this is hugely important. Uh, this, these are 10% off tonight. So when we're done here tonight, you can just go to the back and pick up everything that I'm talking about here supplement wise. Okay. Now, I, I want to get into what we call the core plan. There's two different plans in Maximize Living. This is your eating plan. Uh, at the makeover, we talked about the advanced plan. Now we're going to talk about the core plan. The core plan has three things to pay attention to. The first one is fats. Um, you want to get good fats instead of bad fats and, and eat the healthy fats, which we'll talk about. Number two is protein. Get the right type of protein. So instead of eating commercially raised animal products, you're going to go organic. And then the last one is carbohydrates. Which type of carbohydrates should you be eating? So is it okay to eat grain? Well, yes, but you got to eat the right type and the right time of the day. And you want to eat more vegetables and eliminate the refined grains and sugars. Okay, so let's let's walk through that. The first one's fats. If you look on the left hand side, that's going to be your um, canola oil, vegetable oil, corn oil, damaged fats. Trans fat is another really big one. Um, if you've heard of canola before, the canola plant. Um, raise your hand if you've ever seen someone raise a canola plant. Anybody? Yeah, nobody, because there's no such thing as a canola plant. It's, it's actually an acronym, and it stands for Canadian Oil Low Acid. Canadian Oil Low Acid. Canola. It's from genetically modified rapeseed oil. It's heated and becomes basically a trans fat as soon as you, it's, it's heated up into your body. So you want to get rid of that stuff if you have it in your house, and you want to look at more of the good fats. So the good fats over here are going to be what? Olive oil, what else? Coconut oil, what else? Grapeseed oil, avocado, almonds. All of those are going to be the good oils that you want to put in, and that's going to help correct those fatty acid imbalances that we talked about. So you want to get rid of the damaged fats and do more of the good fats. So when you're making a salad dressing, what would you make it with? Olive oil. If you're, if you're looking in the store but trying to buy salad dressing, it might even say olive oil on there, but you got to be able to read that food label and turn it over, and more than likely it's going to say canola oil. So if you're buying hummus at the store, you want to pick it up because it'll say, you know, so what should it have in it? It's going to have garbanzo beans, salt, and tahini, but you want to make sure it has olive oil, not canola oil. And when you're cooking with the oils, you want to make sure you're cooking with the right oils. Now, protein is really big, and this is an easy one. Because just instead of eating the commercially raised meat that you eat, you're just going to switch to the naturally raised meat um, instead. So the, the problem with commercially raised meats is they're grain fed. So their fatty acid ratios are really messed up. Um, they're pumped full of hormones and antibiotics. If you've ever seen the movie Food Matters, uh, you'll never want to eat a commercially raised cow or chicken. Again, it's absolutely just disgusting the, the conditions that these things come from. And when they inject it with hormones and antibiotics, guess what you're absorbing into your body? The hormones and antibiotics. They're, they're actually blaming a lot of like early onset puberty, especially of, of girls, because we're getting so many hormones from our food. It's just absolutely crazy, which is going to further mess up your hormone balance. So the naturally raised meats have the right balance of fatty acids. They're grass fed. Um, if it's a chicken, you know, it's not, it's not just being, it's not staying in a cage all day. It's not pumped full of hormones and antibiotics. It's allowed to, you know, free range and, and uh, it's, it's fed the right things and not pumped full of pesticides. So that's what you want to make sure you're funct working with with proteins is change the, um, to the, the naturally raised. Now, there's some easy ways you can do this. If you go to a health food store, Sprouts, Whole Foods, um, Trader Joe's, wherever you are, there's, you can do bison, buffalo, which is almost always grass-fed. So that's a much better choice than regular grain-fed red meat. Uh, you can also do, so there's the chicken, like red bird chicken. Instead of the traditional chicken, you can do red bird. And the cool thing about red bird is it's twice as expensive, but if you go to the store 
at the right times it's on sale and you get two for one almost all the time because most people don't buy it because they don't know what it is and they don't pay that much money for it so i pay the same amount for hormone free antibiotic free chicken as as you might for the regular chicken so um instead of lunch meats like you know from oscar meyer or something there's like if you're making a sandwich for your kids you can do Applegate Farms, which is a much, it's antibiotic free, hormone free, naturally raised stuff. So you want to go naturally raised rather than the commercially raised protein. Um, let's get into carbohydrates a little bit. Carbohydrates, when I say carbohydrates, what do you think of? Bread. Yeah, everybody says bread. But what people don't understand is that there's carbohydrates are in different uh, levels. There's what's called low glycemic, moderate glycemic, and high glycemic carbohydrates, and that just is determined by how fast they turn into sugar. The low glycemic carbohydrates don't raise your insulin levels. And remember, insulin messes your hormones up, and they don't raise those insulin levels very fast at all. So the the primary um, carbohydrates you should be eating are going to be what? Veggies, right? They're high in fiber. Veggies, those are always best, and, and you can do those anytime. So any vegetable those are gonna be where you should get a lot of your carbohydrates from. None of what I'm talking about is a high, high protein diet or a low carb diet. It's getting rid of the processed grains, but you're still getting plenty, plenty of carbohydrates. Your body needs those, but you're getting them from vegetables. Um, and then you have the moderate glycemic carbohydrates, reduce or eliminate the consumption after lunch, especially if you're worried about weight loss. Um, you wanna get rid of these things after lunch. Because carbohydrates, what do they do? They fuel your body, and you, it's good in the morning because you need to fuel your body. But if you eat a bunch of carbohydrates before you go to bed, that just turns right to fat. So the worst time to eat a spaghetti and meatball dinner with garlic bread is going to be at night, uh, because you just go to bed a couple hours later, and that's that. It wreaks havoc with your insulin levels. So you can do the um, moderate glycemic carbohydrates, but you want to do those before lunch. All of you have in your silver bullet. You got the Maximize Living Nutrition Plans book here. So it, this has all of the list that shows you what those moderate glycemic carbs are. And then high glycemic carbs, um, eat these only in recovery from exercise. That's like the higher, fruit, higher uh, sugar fruits like bananas, mangoes, uh, those types of things. You only want to eat those after exercise to recover. Um, you want to avoid those completely if weight loss is a concern. So you want to stick really to the lower and the moderate glycemic carbs. And what you want to eliminate is the refined carbohydrates, white bread, white sugar, white flour, white pasta, white rice. Get rid of those. There's nothing good about those. So if you want to do bread, um, Ezekiel bread, Alvarado street bread, those are sprouted grain breads. That's going to be much better for you than traditional white bread or even brown bread. If it says Sara Lee whole wheat bread, um, it, it, it's the same as the white bread. It doesn't, it's hardly any different. So the key if you want to do bread is sprouted. So that's the word sprouted grain bread. So that's like your Ezekiel, and I think Rudy's bread is now doing some sprouted grain as well. Uh, instead of white rice, what do you want to do? You do brown rice. It's going to be much better for you. And the rule of thumb is the longer it takes anything to cook, uh, as far as a grain, the better it's going to be for you, the less it's going to raise those insulin levels. So um, that's where you want to be heading in terms of your carbohydrates. So there's carb replacements as well. This is your Maximize Living Nutrition Plans book. So I eat more... Uh, cupcakes and bread and muffins that I've ever eaten probably in my life, but they're all carb free or uh, grain free, I should say. Um, and they're made with things like flax seeds. Um, you can do flax meal hot cereal. There's almond flour muffins and cookies, uh, nut and seed crackers. So there's different things that you can do. They're going to get rid of those carbohydrates. And so if they're all over your store. When you when we do our next shop with the doc, you can sign up for that. and We'll take you and actually show you how to find these in the store. The second one here is going to be uh, when it goes to when it comes to getting rid of the hormone imbalance and fixing that is xenoestrogens. Remember, we talked about estrogen dominance being the problem, right? So if you have too much estrogen, a lot of it's coming from xenoestrogens, and this is for guys as well. A xenoestrogen is an endocrine disrupting compound that basically um, mimics estrogen. So if you look over here on the right, estrogen binds to this little receptor and it sends a normal message to the cell. And a xenoestrogen, this comes in and it looks like estrogen, so it binds to the same receptor as estrogen, and it sends these unintended signals, signals to the cell. So it mimics estrogen inside of your body, and that can cause a ton of problems, especially when the problem is that you already have too much estrogen. Now these xenoestrogens come in there and, and really ramp up these negative effects inside of your body. So what are xenoestrogens? There's a few different ones. Um, one of them is, if you've heard us talk about the talks, the top five, this is in your cruise ship book, is phthalates. 
So phthalates are plasticizers. They leach from plastic products and they have an estrogen mimicking effect on the body. So that's why we say don't store your food in plastic, store it in glass instead. Uh, don't drink out of plastic water bottles, use like a stainless steel water bottle or something else. Um, so you got to get rid of phthalates and you can't completely avoid plastic, but don't store your food in it and don't drink your water out of it on a daily basis. That's a big one. Uh, another one here is uh, soy. Soy has an estrogen, estrogen mimicking effect in the body as well. Soy is bad for you for a lot of reasons. Processed soy, some of the sickest people in the world I see eat miso and tempeh and, or not, I'm sorry, um, uh, it's the tofu. So when you're eating tofu or the tofu burgers, some of the sickest people I see are vegetarians and that's where they get their protein from um, because that soy is highly processed and it actually blocks the uptake of a bunch of amino acids so that messes up your um, your immune system and it also mimics this estrogen to the point where they say if, if a boy has soy uh, formula as a, as a kid, he should never have another soy product, product again. So soy is not good for you. You want to stay from this, stay away from this processed soy. Now sprouted soy, like, like I just said, miso and tempeh, that stuff's okay. Um, edamame is all right as long as it's not sprayed with, um, with pesticides. And I guess you need to find out where that's coming from, but I'm not a big fan of soy, so we recommend you stay away from that because it mimics estrogen as well. Now, around the home, uh, anything that contains parabens and phthalates, and you can actually read on the back of your uh, personal care products, parabens, was, it will be like para, parabenzoic acid. Um, there's a, any of anything that says parabens, phthalates, you want to avoid those. Okay, and so what we say, if you, if you can't pronounce it, then you shouldn't put it on your body. If you, if you wouldn't eat it, don't put it on your body. Now from foods, this is another really huge one, is coffee is one of the highest sources of the xenoestrogens uh, because of what they, the way they separate the calf from the, from the coffee and the way the, pro, the beans are actually processed. Canola oil is very high in xenoestrogens, but we know we shouldn't be eating those anyway. Um, commercially raised beef and chicken, which we just talked about, because pesticides, they get the pesticides and the herbicides that they feed to the chickens and the beef. Uh, and a lot of uh, uh, experts rest, estimate that the average American ingests over a pound of pesticides. And pesticides are xenoestrogens. They mimic the effect of estrogens. So you want to get rid of those. A lot more, there's a lot more about that in, the, um, in your Toxic Top 5 and your cruise ship book. But let's, for, for now, getting rid of the plastics and changing your meats. Uh, are going to be really big there and, and also changing your veggies so instead of doing the regular vegetables that are sprayed with orga or sprayed with uh, pesticides you want to do the organic so they're not sprayed down okay the last thing I want to talk about here is essential one which is really one of the most important is uh, cortisol levels uh, because of stress cortisol remember we talked about if you're running from that bear in the woods it increases um, uh, your your fight or flight response so it causes increased fat storage, high blood pressure, impaired glucose metabolism, decreased, decreased thyroid function, and decreased immunity. And again, these are all things that are necessary when you're running from a bear. It's a good thing. Your body doing the right thing in the right place at the right time. But when it stays that way, when the cortisol stays elevated, that's when you're in trouble. One thing that cortisol does also is it competes for um, cortisol and, and progesterone are made from the same thing. So if your body's making cortisol, it's not making progesterone. So again, you have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone to balance that out. And that's a big thing to pay attention to. So decreasing your stress is huge. So how do you do that? Um, this is what most people do. Um, place this on a firm surface, follow the directions inside the circle of the kit, repeat step two as necessary or until unconscious. Um, if unconscious, see stress act uh, reduction activity. That's not stress reduction, okay? We want to work on how to prevent stress. Everything we do in Maximize Living is not dealing with the crisis. We want to work from the inside out. So I want to spend a couple minutes on uh, Stephen Covey's Four Quadrants. This is from Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And if you don't, if you haven't, you haven't read the book, get it. Uh, you can go online and just Google uh, Covey's Four Quadrants as well. But I'll, I'll walk you through this. He says basically we live our lives in four different quadrants, the activities that we do on a daily basis. So they're important or non-important and urgent or non-urgent. So quadrant one up here, that's gonna be important, urgent. Important, urgent. So that's gonna be crisis, um, pressing problems, deadline-driven products, like these are things that you have to do right now. And you move over to, to number two is that's gonna be prevention, relationship building, recreation, rebuilding yourself, new opportunities, being creative, 
those are important. They're just as important as one, but they're not urgent. Does that make sense? So it, it, no one's telling you you have to do prevention right now. No one's telling you you have to go on a date with your wife. No one's telling you you have to right now um, think about your future. Those are very important, but they're not urgent. And then you move down here to number three. These are the non-important urgent. So these are things that aren't important. They don't necessarily need to be handled right now, but they're in your face. So that's interruptions in your daily routine, some phone calls, some mail or email, um, some meetings, popular activities. So there's these things are non-important, but they can appear to be urgent. So one of the ones I always talk about here is text. When you get a text, it's in your face, even though most of the texts are not remotely um, important, they seem urgent. It's uh, your friend telling you, uh, sending out a group text to somebody about whatever. It's um, your, your my, my wife asked me when I'm gonna be home from work tonight or something like that, but it's not something I need to do right now. Unfortunately, everything now with these smartphones is everything now somehow becomes urgent. You know, Facebook, it's urgent that you reply back to somebody or it's urgent that you post on somebody's wall. It's crazy and that's where we spend a lot of our time. I guess Facebook could also go into the number four over here, which would be a non-important, non-urgent. So that's trivia, just stuff where you're just kind of browsing the internet, some email, time wasters, I guess that would be where I think the Facebook comes in for a lot of people. You just get on there and you're just wasting time. I've actually gotten rid of Facebook because what I had found that I was doing, I don't know if you guys were, but all I did was go through there and find stuff I didn't like and it just irritated me. So it wasn't anything beneficial at all, but we spend way too much time here. So how does this relate to stress? Well, here's the issue. Most people spend way too much time where? In, in quadrants number one, in quadrant number three. Very few people spend time on purpose in quadrant number two, which is the non-urgent important. My, my daughter's not gonna walk up to me and say, Daddy, um, you're not spending enough time with me, so I'm gonna um, develop a drug addiction when I'm 16 years old and, and, and marry the wrong person and everything else because you're ignoring me today. She's not gonna do that. I have to know that I have to take proactive steps to make sure I'm managing those relationships and, and pouring into her so I don't end up with a crisis in, in number one over here, which is whatever, drug addiction, you know, marrying the wrong person, whatever, you gotta spend time in, in um, number two. So here's the way to fix it. The cause is gonna be a lot of times down here, number three and number four. We spend too much of our time in three and four on things that aren't important. And then the symptom is gonna be number one. So quadrant one, if you spend too much time in number three and four, you're gonna get a lot of crisis. You're gonna get a lot of pressing problems. You're gonna get a lot of things that need your attention right now because there's an emergency. This is the, um, you don't ever take your wife on a date. Uh, you don't ever buy her flowers. You don't ever give her any type of, uh, any type of compliments or anything like that, These, which are the non-urgent important. So that's the number two. If you don't ever do that, guess what's gonna happen? One day you're gonna have a talk or you're gonna get divorce papers and you're dealing with it, but you're dealing with it in number one. So the cure for all of this is spend time in quadrant number two. Planning. You guys know this when it comes to eating. Plan your meals. Um, prepare your meals. Prepare your life. Prepare your day. Prepare your week. Plan things out. I, I have a date night with my wife every week, whether we, we feel like it or not. We have that date night. It's set in there. I have a date with my kids. We have we plan what we're going to eat. We spend a lot of time in number two, and you'll find that successful people spend a lot of time in quadrant number two over here. So where is it in your life where you're having a lot of crisis? Same thing, if you don't plan for your meals and you don't plan to shop, you will deal with a crisis. It'll be in, in the quadrant number one, but it's in the form of you have a heart attack and you're in the emergency room and they're cracking your chest open. That would have only been prevented through spending time in quadrant number two. So start spending more time in those quadrants or in number two and not spending all this time in number three and number four. That's what decreases the stress in your life. That's how you we call it peace management rather than stress management. Um, so you can't, if you go to a church, you don't go through poverty management, you go through wealth management uh, a class. And, you know, when I go to my financial advisor, I don't want him to teach me how to manage poverty. I want him to teach me how to manage the wealth. So you wanna manage your peace. That's what we're doing in these four quadrants. Now, one other thing I want to mention when it comes to uh, when we get to essential number uh, four there is max T3 and what it does specifically for hormones. You guys, have, if you come to our max T3 classes on the weekend or you've gotten your you have your DVD, you've been doing max T3, you'll know it increases uh, growth hormone and testosterone, which is great for men and women, um, decreases cortisol. And again, remember, cortisol messes up all of the other hormones. Cortisol is your enemy. 
and it causes fat to be burned after exercise, and this is a really big one. It increases the sensitivity to insulin. So remember we talked about insulin was one of the main problems when it comes to hormones in our body. When we get that insulin sensitivity, the insulin levels go down, and that's what Max T3 does for you. So those workouts are huge rather than going and spending 45 minutes on the treadmill every day, do your Max T3 instead. Um, in terms of decreasing uh, the cortisol levels, I think I'm growing more and more impressed with this supplement. I think it's really one of the most important that we have. Um, green coffee bean uh, that's in this Max Fit, it decreases uh, your blood sugar and helps your body um, function with insulin better. And then ashwagandha reduces cortisol levels by up to 25%. This is absolutely huge. So everybody in this room that's worried about these hormone issues needs to be taking this because it will actually help correct that imbalance um, on from the inside out. So those are on sale tonight as well. This is the most important thing we're going to talk about tonight is the spine brain connection. As a lot of you guys know, the nervous system is the first system to develop in your body. And it controls every cell tissue and organ in your body is controlled by your brain and your spinal cord. It regulates all systems throughout life and it processes everything. So it controls all function and healing. And to prove this, um, if I cut your head off right now, are you alive or are you dead? You're dead. 100% of the time you're dead, right? This is not a belief system. This is just anatomy and physiology. So what does it have to do with hormones? Well, for the, that, remember we talked about the conductor and the, and the symphony earlier? That is controlled by the central nervous system, which lies inside this x-ray. So your brain is up here, and then the spinal cord runs through here. And as long as you have that normal curve in the neck, all the messages are able to get down through the spinal cord, out your body, out to your body the way they're supposed to, so it can um, conduct all of the different glands and organs and levels the way it's supposed to. So if you look over here on this um, cadaver study on the right, you can see how the, there's the brain and the spinal cord and there's nice um, relaxation of the spinal cord. So that conductor is, is, is making sure everything is working exactly the way it's supposed to. Abnormal cervical lordosis is when you lose the normal curvature in the spines. If you look at this one on the left, there's a actually reversed curve. And if you look on the right over here in an MRI study, you can see that the spinal cord is getting squeezed down between these arrows here. So what's happening to the conductor over here? It's, it's not managing anything the way it was intended to. So the hormones are a mess because the, the one thing that controls all of the health and healing and, and is conducting that symphony isn't functioning the way it's supposed to. And there's a specifically right at the base of the brainstem is called the Rafa nuclei. This is where serotonin is controlled and serotonin controls your fight or flight response. And the fight or flight is what's that hormone again? That's, that's cortisol, right? Serotonin levels can be affected by a C1 subluxation um, right here, right at the base of the brainstem. Also, from a loss of the cervical lordosis because of pathological tension. So when you lose that curve, it pulls the brainstem down against C1 and compresses that area. Well, if your serotonin's not working, you have mood swings, um, sleep issues, cortisol levels go through the roof. So when we see people come in and we correct this area, I see a lot of people's hormones clear up just because we remove that interference up there. And again, the conductor is working the way it was designed to. Well, how do you know if you have a problem with the cervical lordosis or with the upper part of your spine? Well, there's warning signs. And these warning signs are just like driving your car and the oil light comes on. So what do you do when the oil light comes on? You get an oil change, right? You fix the problem. The check engine light, you go get it checked out. You don't just cover it up with a piece of duct tape. So if there's these warning signs, are, headaches are a big one because those nerves go right back up into the head. So if you're damaging the nerves in the neck that go to the head, you're going to have what? Headaches. And what do most people do? They take medication, uh, they'll take over-the-counter or they'll take prescription medication. And are those fixing the problem? No, your headaches are not an Advil deficiency. There's a cause to the problem and you need to find out what that is. Uh, another really big one is gonna be depression. We just talked about serotonin. So if you have serotonin deficiency or issues with serotonin because of a subluxation in the upper cervical spine, what do they do? They give you antidepressants, which cause all kinds of other problems. And so, what kind of problems are we talk about? Suicidal and homicidal thoughts. They make you feel like a zombie, cause it digestive constipation issues. That's not a solution. Another big one is acid reflux at the base of the neck. Those nerves, there's a, actually at the top of the neck, there's a nerve called the vagus nerve. And if that vagus nerve isn't filing, firing properly, there's too much stomach acid because again, your body's not balanced. That and The nervous system is interfered with. What do they do? They put you on Prilosec or Nexium or the purple pill. You're not supposed to be on those things for more than six weeks. It says it in the insert. I see people that are on these things for five or six years. Um, hypertension is another big one, blood pressure. 
Um, there's a study that showed that chiropractic adjustments lowered blood pressure better than two different drugs. And I see that all the time in here. If you look at that drug freedom trash can, you'll see a lot of blood pressure medications in there. Um, sciatica, which is low back pain going down into the leg. Um, neck and back pain, obviously. And this other really big one is vertigo. This top bone in the spine. I see so many more people now dealing with this to the point where I have a patient who had to retire because his vertigo was so bad. I mean, they, they have mandatory retirement because he was dizzy all the time. He went to every neurologist. No one ever checked his neck. We took an x-ray. He's got a complete loss of the curve in the neck. Started adjusting him to fix that, and he's completely back to normal. He was able to get his driver's license back again, able to go back to work because we got to the cause. So if you're dealing with any of those, any of those, and you don't get corrected, it just what? It gets worse. And so how much worse does it have to get before you do something about it? What we're here tonight to do is to help the people around you that need help. So raise your hand if you're here and you brought a guest with you. Raise your hand. Great. What we're going to do tonight is you're going to go back and see um, Sandy back there, and she's going to actually get you an appointment made to come and get that evaluation. You're going to be able to come in the office and get an evaluation to see how your power is turned on or turned off. So that's the first step. So sign up for your first appointment today. You'll do that with Sandy. So if you brought someone, take them back as soon as I'm done and get them scheduled for that evaluation. And we will find out if we can help you. If we can't help you, I'll tell you that as well. You got nothing to lose and you got your health and your life to gain, but it's time to take responsibility for your health. Um, the one thing I ask is if you're not serious about doing it, um, then don't make the appointment. Don't feel like you have to be obligated. But if you're serious about changing your health, go make that appointment with Sandy and she'll get you guys all set for that appointment. And don't forget, we also have the supplements that are all 15% uh, off tonight. So make sure you go back there and head out and do those. We have our next patient appreciation day coming up here next week. You guys all, all should have your flyers for that. And uh, we're excited to, to see you guys heal. So God bless. Talk to you soon.